Germany, April 1945, behind the Allied lines. One of the most fantastic incidents to come out of World War II is contained in United States Counterintelligence Secret Periodic Report Number 262 of the 12th Corps. During the closing days of the war, the desperate Nazi High Command secretly sent units of highly specialized troops behind the Allied lines. Some were dropped by parachute in small units. Others infiltrated on foot. Many wore American uniforms and spoke English fluently. These men, calling themselves werewolves after an old Germanic legend of humans who could transform themselves into bloodthirsty wolves, were suicide commandos with the avowed purpose of spreading death and destruction. The dedicated mission of one such unit was the assassination of the Allied Chief of Staff, General Dwight D. Eisenhower. Our story begins almost four years earlier in New York City on the day that we'll live in infamy, December 7, 1941. 508, 50 cents, 327 a dollar, uh, 624 a dollar, 333, two dollars. Uh, Harry, hold it a minute. Hey, I thought all the girls went home. I was suddenly taken drunk. Hey, Harry, I'll call you back. My next door neighbor dropped in for a cup of sugar. Well, I sure don't remember seeing you last night. And I never forget a face. What's your name? Ruby. What's yours? Steve. Well, don't call me Steve. I'll call you. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Uh, stick around, I'll send off a coffee. That kind of an offer can turn a girl's head. Well, how about a drink? I never could say no to a bookie. Bookie, me? Oh, you mean... No, I was just going over my arithmetic homework with an old classmate. Make yourself at home. And although the first reports of the bombing of Pearl Harbor are fragmentary, it's believed the loss of American life and damage to property is appalling. Stand by, Did you please. hear that? Somebody bombed Pearl Harbor. Hello? Oh. The Japanese flew uh, in get some music. Days. It's not yet known how much damage was done to Hickam Field or which naval vessels were berthed at Pearl Harbor. This station will cut in on any program throughout the day to keep our listeners posted. Hey, There's I another said report get coming some in music. The teletype. This one is Dateline. Pearl Harbor must be an American city. He's talking about American ships. All right, so it's American and I'm bleeding. That's a funny thing to say. All right, how's this? Hooray for the red, white, and blue. You satisfied? Yeah. you just try this for size. Like I said, I never could say no to a bookie. Well, that's good, because we'll make this a day to remember. Uh, it's two, three, two a dollar, one, four, four, half a dollar. And that's it, Harry. Well, sure, I know business has fallen off, but look, some of my best customers are in uniform. <laughs> Who, me? No, don't you worry about me being drafted. My number's right near the bottom of the list, and I ain't rubbing any skin off my elbow joining up. Hey, Harry, uh, I'll call you back later. Yeah, my next-door neighbor, yeah. All right, take it easy, Ruby. Daddy's on his way. Okay, Daddy. You're on your way, all right, to the lockup. This is just what we need to clinch it. The Book of Numbers. Thanks, Bolin. Well, uh... Who tipped you off about me? You shouldn't try to shortchange your customers and blame it on the war. They don't like it. Look, uh, maybe we can fix it up, huh? Go. How 
you make out? Oh, it was a pushover. Oh, bet. Yeah, all I had to do was promise the judge I'd join the army. Are you going to? What, are you kidding? Come on, let's get out of here. Okay, Bolin. You and I are going bye-bye. Get your dirty paws off me. I beat the rap in there, didn't I? Sure. All right. But the judge asked me to keep you company as far as the recruiting office, soldier boy. So let's get going. <laughs> Find it pretty interesting reading, Chaplain, the uh, Steve Bowen story? Eight weeks in the Army, in hot water, five times. So they don't give me a good conduct ribbon. Hey, maybe they'll even kick me out of the Army, huh? Is that what you're after, Stephen? I didn't ask to get in, did I? What about your duty to your country? What duty? Look, Chaplain, why don't you peddle your Bible to somebody that wants it? I'm trying to help you, Stephen. Oh, you're trying to help me? Well, all right, I'll, I'll make a deal with you, Chaplain. You get your big boss up there to snap his almighty fingers and say, uh, Steve Bolin, you're no longer in a clink. You ain't even in uniform. You're back home with your girl, Ruby, and you're out on a town living it up like you used to. You do that, Chaplain, and I'll yell amen with the best of them. Smoke. No man is born with bitterness in his heart. Oh, I heard that pitch about how all men are created equal. Sometimes the hurt and frustrations of a hard childhood can cause it. Oh, are you kidding? Until I was 15, I led a sheltered life. My governess wouldn't let anybody near me outside my tutors. Hurt you said, huh? You know, Chaplain, that was a luxury we couldn't afford. You were too busy trying to stay alive. And if you get out your fiddle, and I'll just sing you some more of that. Like, uh, when I was a kid, I used to wait for the bakery wagon. You know, if I didn't steal a couple of rolls that morning, we just didn't eat. And it seemed like it was all of a sudden I was no more kid. Maybe I was never kid, I don't know. I didn't have any trade or training or learning of any kind. Uh, what am I telling you? So you became a gambler, a bookie. You know about that? It's all here, Stephen. Reform school, everything. Uh, so what did you expect, Chaplain? A lawyer, a doctor, an engineer, maybe, huh? I'm going to pray for you, Stephen. <laughs> you know. For a man that doesn't believe in gambling, you're sure putting your money on a long shot. I'm going to pray that you find your reason for being. Reason for being? What's that supposed to mean? God put every one of us on this earth for a purpose. Perhaps before this terrible war is over, you'll find yours. Let it ride. You can't win if you don't bet it. Here's five more systems coming up. Five more. Right? Five more. Right up, boy. Okay, you lovely little dice. Front for the hills, man. MPs. Look at all that lovely money. I must have a hole in my pocket. Well, Junior, here's your 10. You've been a real good boy.
what are you supposed to be, Baldwin? A privileged character? No, just smart. You know, this may come as quite a surprise to you, but the War Department has requested us to get this show on the road. Why don't you suckers wise up? We're not going anyplace. You're wrong, Bowling. This time, we're moseying. They pulled that gag on us twice before. Get ready, pack up, and get ready to move, and unpack and stay. I reckon they have to do that to keep them saboteurs from doing any saboteuring. Well, I ain't gonna bust my back for nothing. And, uh, here's 50 bucks here that says this is another dry run. 50 bucks. Anybody want to take me up on it? Huh? 50. No red-blooded American boys? What about you, Jonasy? Shucks, fella. You'd just be throwing away all that good money. Hey, Dickie boy. Don't forget to pack the art gallery, huh? Improves your mind, you know. I wonder what the girls are like in New Caledonia. Ah, uh, who cares? As long as they ain't boys. Uh, they, uh, who says we go into New Caledonia? Well, I figured all the tropical gear they gave us. Ah, that's what they call a red herring. A buddy of mine got six shots for jungle fever. <laughs> His outfit wound up in Iceland. Uh, now, the way I figure it, we're heading for Europe. Tell you what I'll do. Suppose you boys spread the word around that Steve Bolton is paying real good odds to anyone that can call the place that we're going to and name the day that we're arriving. You know, I gave up my job when I got into uniform. Why don't you give yours up, bookie boy? Why don't you keep your nose out of my business? Take it easy, Bolton. Brooklyn didn't mean no harm. I think I'll go out and volunteer for the garbage detail. Get a breath of fresh air. Yucks, if I'd have known there was going to be such a hullabaloo, I would have told him where we're heading. You mean you know? The other day when I was policing up near the HQ, I heard the CO talking. <laughs> I reckon he didn't know I can hear a possum sleeping at 50 yards. Yeah, we're shoving off tonight for England. Well, if you knew that, why did you take me up in that $50 bet? Shucks, Filler, a couple of, couple of guys are going through a war together. That uh, kind of makes some buddies, don't it? If you had been in that Linden library any longer, I would have had to report it. You missed Yeah, well, they didn't have a book that I wanted. Now, wait till I write down an address here before I forget. Every time we get a pass to come to London, you come over here and pick up some books. But I, I have never seen you reading any. I can't read them. See, they're in code. I'm on a secret mission for the War Department. You are? Yeah. I'm supposed to spread... I'm supposed to spread goodwill among our English cousins. It don't make no sense to me, but I reckon if you say so, why... Another time, Jonesy. This is a one-man mission. I still don't think that's no lending library. Hold it, fella. Your papers. What do you do with those books? Oh, you know what they say, you join the army and learn? Well, I'm studying a trade. The 
ballet in England? Oh, uh, Mother sent me this for Easter. She's a balloon dancer. Yeah, sure. Okay. You, Myra? Yes. Oh, you must be Stevie Boy. Uh, yeah. Come in. Right here. Nylons, canned butter, cigarettes, you name it. No watches. Get a load of these service stripes. Oh. Pretty nice, huh? You like it? Uh huh. So, where's the money? There's other things besides money. Well, not for me, there ain't. You know, a man in this racket can need you to be the happiest soldier in the army or the richest. I like the riches. Oh, go, ain't you the mercenary one? Well, tell me what you got. Gum. Hey, that's a bit of all right. Canned butter. Cigarettes. Chocolate. <gasps> yeah, look at this. you for this, buddy. Come on. Hey, come back. Look here, Yank. Take your hands off them things. They're mine. Ain't they, soldier boy? Yeah, that's right. I never saw that stuff before in my life. Come on. over. If you ever need a latrine, just call Boland. These wise guys got a good idea. Stay in a nice, safe guardhouse, even without pay. Yeah, a real good idea, especially when you're yellow. Hey, Don't you know that a guard attack like that has the right to shoot? Well, he's got no right to ride me every time he's on guard duty. Poland, your record in this army has been a disgrace. So kick me out. You've been angling for that since the first day you were drafted. Won't work. I know your type. Dishonorable discharge wouldn't mean a thing to you. I'm going to keep you in my outfit if it takes a special act of Congress. We've got orders to get every able-bodied man available for immediate action. That even includes a bunch of goof-ups like this. I want every man here to report to his unit within one hour and on the double. Dismiss!
what every home needs, huh? Cozy fire, the love of a beautiful woman. Well, I can see the fire, but where's the beautiful woman? Right up here, Josie. Right up here. And if anybody asks me what's cooking, I can always say Wasser Blake. Well, you mind if and I see that there? Wasser Bird. 2020 vision. Now cover the left eye. I, I reckon back in the States that'd be Water Town. So what? Well, that's where I was born. Watertown, Texas. You ever stop to wonder what it would be like if you had been born different? Well, what do you mean, different? Well, you know, suppose you were born in Wasserburg, Germany, instead of Watertown, Texas. What would you be like? What would you be thinking? Where would you be? I'd tell you where I'd be. Miles down the road. Heading for home just like the rest of them krauts. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, you fellas take it easy for a spell. I'm gonna go wrestle up some chow. Excuse me. I just checked in and the first sergeant told me to come over here. Attention, men. Fresh meat. Wow. These replacements are getting younger all the time. Pretty soon they'll be sending them over with nice maids. I hope. I'll lay off of them, Brooklyn. Come on, kid. We're just grabbing some coffee. Have some. Thanks. Gee, I thought I'd never make it. Make what? Well, you fellas are moving through Germany so fast, I thought the war would be over before I had a chance to see any action. Well, kept you awake nights worrying, huh? Sure did. Drink your coffee. Check it off, men. We're hitting the road. Oh, a fine stinking war. They don't even give you 10 minutes to, to wash your hand grenade. Come on, I'm a double. Oh, you're real eager, real young. Get a load of Grandpa. You're not much older than I am. I was older than you the day after I was born. You want a cigarette? I don't smoke. That figures. Did you hear the scuttlebutt? We're less than two miles from the Rhine. Say, wouldn't it be great if you and I were the first ones across? Yeah, great. Let's go, so we'll be right up front. Come on, you crazy. Hey, hey, take the right. Junior. Next time you might not be so so lucky. So you're a hero. Oh, Jonas, what's the matter with you? You can get yourself killed rushing in on a guy like that. Twice as easy getting killed if you stay out there. I got that crowd spotted, Bolin. I'm gonna drop this nice little Easter egg right under his tail, fellas. You know, you're a sucker. If you want me to, I'll ask him to move over, make room for another hero. Shucks, fella, I ain't no hero. That there crowd machine gun is holding up our advance. You know, our orders is to get to the next town. Wait a minute. Buddy of yours? I ain't got no buddies. 
Well, you got one now. Let's go. Come on, man. Those lovely crowds left us, huh? A honeymoon cottage. Hey! Guess who? Uh, uh. <laughs> hey, we hit the jackpot this time. Huh? G.I. Cots. No wonder them crowds hated to leave this town. They never had it so good. Uh, after the places we've been sleeping in, we never had it so good either. Uh. If and I only had my ma's goose feather mattress. Who needs a mattress? Man, I'm gonna sleep for a week. All right. I think we ought to go out and scrounge around for some blankets and things, huh? Good idea. Let's... Let's go. Yeah. Good idea. Let's go. So I got it all figured out, Jonasy. The boys pitch in a dollar apiece, Pink. And I want to guess is the exact day, hour, and minute the first American soldier in his Berlin wins the jackpot. Well, it sounds good, Steve, but how are you going to find the exact minute? I don't. There's no winner. That's too bad, huh? Oh, come on. Come on. Hello. Well, hello. You want a cigarette? I think that can be arranged. Uh, come on, Steve. Now, you're going to get in trouble. That kind of trouble I like. Hey, this is quite a menu for a line. Now, if we had a couple of bottles of beer, you put a steak there? Now, wait a minute. What's the hurry? Please let me go. Oh, you speak and see English, huh? That'll make it easier. Please. Now, look, if, take it easy. If you don't like beer, I think I know why I can get a little cognac. Has geglaubt, ich werde dich nicht erwischen, huh? Much thanks to you for stopping her. You think she's on the lamb? Nein, no lamb. Metwurst. Bread, potato. She stole it from my house. What are you going to do with it? Turn her over to the authorities. It pains me, but what else can I do? Well, here, you rub a little of this on your wounds. Maybe the pain will go away. I'll beat it. Come on, beat it. Thank you. I can still rustle up that cognac. Why not? My place is around the corner. Sorry, Jonasy. There's only two straws with this bottle. Now, now Steve, you're going to get yourself into another gem. You know the rule against fraternization. Yeah, I know the rule, but nobody ever explained to me what the word fraternization means. I'll see you, John. What does it mean? I'm sorry I don't have more to offer you. I'll take my chances with what you got. What's your name? Ilsa. Oh, mine's Steve. What did you learn to speak English so good? My brother lived in America for a long time. He told me. Oh. Well, Gesundheit. <laughs> Gesundheit is for sneezing. For drinking it is prose. Oh, you ought to smile more often. It sure does things for you. Smile? When? During the bombings, while we fight to stay alive, or after the bombings, when we try to keep from starving. Very yeah, pretty rough, huh? No, I don't complain. Prost. Prost.
You live here alone? Mm-hmm. No family? A brother. He's in the army. Until last week, I used to get letters. A little money. Now that our village is occupied, who knows whether I shall ever hear from him again. That's why. This. Oh, yeah. Well, for me, it used to be the bakery wagon. I don't understand. Uh, it's all right. Just forget it. You see, it is the first time I ever stole anything. I... I feel ashamed. Well, sure, sure, I understand. Here, come here. I expect you to believe me. Why should you? A person can go only so far. When I met those men, I, I went with them because I was desperate. Then when I saw he had so much food, probably a war profiteer. And I had nothing. I stole. Is it so wrong to take a few morsels when you are hungry? And this is all you got? More than I had yesterday. More than I shall have tomorrow. Oh! I'll tell you. You just keep your chimney open, baby, because Santa Claus will be coming down in about one little old hour. Don't forget, one hour. You know, if you kept messing around with those Freud lines, if they catch you, you've got to get 30 days in front of a firing squad. This one's worth it. Beware, American. Beware. This is the werewolf station. Like the dreaded oh, werewolves of the Oh, screwballs again. Of the night, to spread out of the night, to spread terror and distraction, so shall we spring from the darkness to spread the darkness. You know, it might, might be an improvement over some of the companions they give you here. We have prepared for this moment for a long time. We have taken an oath that not one of you will live to return to his homeland. Do not be misled. You know, it's guys like that that make, make Dodger fans become giant fans. How about that corny name? <laughs> Weirwolves. I suppose it'd be from some old superstition about fellas what could change themselves into wolves. Ain't no superstition, Jonesy. Happens to a lot of guys, especially when they get a pass. If you're talking about me, Brooklyn, you've got the right idea. You gotta dangle a bait if you wanna catch the fish. Hey, what'd you do? Rub a PX? This didn't come out of any PX. Look at that. Picked it up in France. Made a deal with, uh, well, you know, a casual friend. You won't get two blocks loaded down like that. The town is crawling with MPs. Oh, yeah, there's a hot flash that the top grass is setting up housekeeping near here. Maybe Ike himself. Well, we got a deal. He don't bother me. I don't bother him. Don't wait up for me. Uh, now, look, Steve, if you ask me, you're just looking for trouble. Well, I didn't ask you. So stay off my back. You know, that guy'd make a wonderful stranger. I don't know why you put up with him. Because he's my buddy, that's why.
so much food. It has been a long time. You're better, huh? Mm, like a glutton. Real coffee. <laughs> when I was a little girl, Steve, I often dreamed that night that I was a beautiful princess. I remember how I felt even in my sleep. Unreal, apart. Since the rest of the world no longer existed. I feel like that now. Well, that's good. Because with me around, baby, all your troubles are over. What's the, what's the matter? Don't you like the idea? A little more cognac. Oh, sure. Here, you just drink up. We've got a large evening ahead, and my pass is good until midnight. Hey, 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 hey. Wow, you drank that like you were headed for the electric chair. In America, you have a saying like we have in Germany. After one dances, one must pay for the music. Oh, no, you, you've got me all wrong, baby. I don't expect payment for anything. I, uh, it's just that I, I like you. I want to do things for you. Look at what else I brought you. Real nylons. Hey, look here. This is from Paris. You know Paris, France? I've been saving it for someone special. Am I supposed to be somebody special? Sure, you're someone real special. All right. What are you trying to prove? You didn't believe I never stole before. How can I expect you to believe? I never even kissed a man. I suppose you went to that, that guy's apartment to read the gas meter. I went, yes. But I couldn't go through with it. I just couldn't, Steve. I'm not like those other girls on the street. You like that. For once in my life, I'm not out after the almighty dollar. You know, I, I said to myself, forget business, Steve. Live it up a little. Have a good time. So what happens? Nothing happens. You don't believe no, me. No, that's the trouble. I do believe you. But you're, you're worse than those other women to me. They don't make any pretenses. They don't lead a man on. You're nothing but a, a, a cheat. I hate to be cheated. If you feel that way, Steve, I will not cheat you. Don't you do me any favors.
getting out of here. Knock it off. This ain't no warm-up. It's a real toughie pull. Them crowds ain't got enough left for a counterattack. They must be trying to cover up something. And just where do you think you're going? Over the fence. Don't tell me I'm asking for trouble, because this time I am. Don't seem to matter. Bill, sir. I've got to tell you. When I left here, I was angry and, and confused. I was running away. I don't know why. And then, then when it started up outside, I got real scared. I've never been scared before. And I think it's because it, I never had anybody to worry about before. Oh, Gilles. I love you. I love you too, Steve. I knew at the moment the door closed behind you. And I thought I would never see you again. You were reported absent from quarters last night. I had a pass. On a little midnight. Well, when the fireworks started up, I couldn't get back. Well, according to this, you reported back to quarters before the attack started. You left later without authorization. I had something important to do with it. Very important. Boland, you've been a misfit and a troublemaker ever since you joined my outfit. You've shown absolutely no regard for military authority. Well, this time I'm going to throw away the key. 
It'll be a long time before you see another pass. That's all. Well, what is it? Listen, Captain. I know I've been out of line a few times. But everything's going to be different now. There's somebody that's waiting to hear from me. It's an old army buddy of mine. I need one more pass so that I can explain. There's nothing in your record that indicates I should give you special treatment. Just one pass, Captain. I've got to have it. I said that was all, Bullen. Listen, Captain, don't you understand? All I'm asking for is one lousy pass. I'll play it according to the book from now on. I'll do anything you say, but I gotta have that pass. Corporal! Take this man to the guardhouse. I followed your directions, Steve, but I just can't find the place. I could have found it with my eyes closed. If you only had her address. I told you I didn't even notice the name of the street. Well, maybe she figured it was one of those things, you know. Or maybe she moved away. She didn't move away. She's waiting to hear from me, I'm telling you. You've got to find her and explain. Hey, okay, now, just take it easy. I'll keep looking. Sorry, Ilsa. I thought you would shut my name. Oh, God. God. Uh, a little older, maybe, but just as pretty as ever. So, Ilsa has a greeting for her brother, but not her lifelong admirer. Lutwe. Oh. We had excitement. I didn't recognize you. When the war started, we left a little schoolgirl. Look at her now. But I don't understand. American uniforms. If you're caught, you'll be shot as spy. Mm -hmm. These days, there are more important things than spying. You see, Ludwig and I are werewolves. There was. I heard stories. I never believed such an organization existed. Will you sit down, Ilsa, please? You know, of course, the war is going against us. No, that's no secret. But it will take a miracle by the Fuhrer to save us. I no longer believe in the Fuhrer's miracle. Mm, but you will again. That is why Himmler and Goebbels created the werewolves in the first place. We may be the miracle Germany needs. Now? When the war is practically lost? What can you hope to accomplish? With one bold imaginative stroke, we shall crush the enemy's morale and turn defeat into victory. I have cigarettes. Hmm. American. I thought my sister would be different. It is not the way you think of. There was only one man. He gave me food, cigarettes. He was kind to me. I was very fond of him. I thought he was different. Different? They are all the same. I know, Carl. I didn't know then.
Ludwig spoke from turning defeat into victory. I don't understand how. Let me quote from the oath we took when we became werewolves. To stay behind, evade capture, destroy supplies, and terrorize the troops of the United States Army. And to kill the Allied Supreme Commander. General Eisenhower? Can you imagine the confusion, the effect on enemy morale? Even if it were possible, Carl, the war is lost. All you can hope to do is prolong it. No, we will win it. The two of you, you and Ludwig? There are more. More than 30 in our unit alone, in the East Forest. We're well armed, with enough food for weeks. Ludwig and I were sent on ahead to look around. We know the town. And we know how to talk like Americans. Right, buddy? Roger. You see, Ilsa, the years Ludwig and I spent in America will not be wasted. Now we are American GIs. We have the credentials to prove it. Carl, Ludwig. All you can accomplish is get yourself killed. Our lives are not important, as long as the mission is accomplished. The whole idea is insane. As crazy as everything that comes out of the Führer's head. Ah! Stop, Elsa! You dare to talk like that! I'm sorry I had to do that to you. But I tell you, our mission is so important that if I felt you stood in the way of it, I would not hesitate to shoot you. Still ain't seen half nor hair of her. Keep trying. I can't. Uh, Scuttlebutt says we'll be shoving out of here in a couple of days.
remember this? Father, it's a watch. I carried it all through the war. I want you to keep it. I couldn't. It's your good luck piece. Now, here is all the money I have. They will send you any back pay that I have coming. Carl, you're saying goodbye. Ludwig and I will not be coming back here. It's much too risky. Well, that isn't the reason. You found the information you came for. We have excellent contacts. Today, maybe tomorrow, we will make our move. You mustn't call. You'll be killed. Ilsa, we have been all through this. Let us not make our last goodbye an angry one. Ludwig, I beg you. At least we shall die like men. In our own uniforms instead of these. Goodbye, Ilsa. Elsa, you will remember me kindly, huh? Wait! Congratulations. I have known a lot of women. They were sharp, conniving women. But they don't even bat in your leg. And me, Steve Boland, a real smart guy. I bust out of a clink just because of someone like you, with every MP this side of the Rhine River gunning for me. Oh, I just thought it'd be. That's why you didn't come back. You were arrested. Oh, I didn't know. Oh, well, that's just too bad. Maybe if you'd have known, you'd have had a band waiting for me here alongside the reception committee. Steve, I thought you'd run away. Oh, Steve. Get away. Get away from me. You're wasting your time. It took away my nylons and my chocolate bars. Steve, one of those men is my brother. Oh, yes, in an American uniform, a real G.I. Joe himself. How can I make you believe? Come inside, Steve. There's something I've got to tell you, something very important. Come on. What's the matter? Your papers. Sure, Sarge. Here. What are you fellows doing out so late? Well, our outfit just pulled in, Sarge. We were giving this jerk town to once over. What's up, Sarge? Anything special? Ah, oh, just routine. Some joker busted out of the prison enclosure. Yeah? Hey, when you catch him, you better keep him after school, huh? Go oh, ahead. Yeah. <laughs> Right, buddy? Roger. Ilsa, look, if I made it back to headquarters without getting shot, I'd be still gambling with five years of my life on a rock pile. I'm gambling too, Steve, with my brother's life. Now, this is what I can't understand. Why? What's, what's the angle? I would do anything to help shorten the war. One day, even one hour. Even if it means selling your brother down a river? Please. This is the only way I can save his life. Oh, no, nothing doing, Ilsa. If I stick my neck out now, it's a sucker play, and I don't make sucker plays. The other night, Steve, when you told me so much about yourself, about your boyhood, I found out why you're so bitter. But you're wrong, Steve, terribly wrong. Even while I was listening to you, I was so envious, it hurt. Envious because my old man was a drunk and because we went around hungry all the time? Because you had freedom, Steve. Whatever you did with your life, at least you were free to make your own choice. See, this is a freedom my brother and I have never known. Okay, get your coat. Thank you, Steve. I may not get another chance, but you know why I'm doing this? I know, Steve. But tell me anyhow. I love you, Wilson.
This is the East Forest. They are hiding somewhere in here. Five miles behind our lines. Has counterintelligence received any reports of German units in this area, Captain? No, Colonel. CIC has screened hundreds of PWs and civilians in the past few days. Not a hint. Nothing in G2 either. You say about 30 men, Fraulein? In my brother's unit alone. There are other units elsewhere. They have been infiltrating for a long time. That's quite possible, Colonel. Thousands of civilians and soldiers have been pouring into our territory in the past few days, rather than fall into Russian hands. You say your brother told you that the Werewolf Organization was founded in 1943? Yes, sir. That's when Heinrich Himmler ordered the first training school in Poland. It was later moved to Surenberg in September of 1944. They have been waiting until now to start operations. Fantastic, these Nazis. Preparing to lose the war back in 1943, before D-Day, when they were winning it. These operations, Fraulein, you know what they are? Assassinations of high officers, blowing up our munition dumps and gasoline depots. The main mission is an assassination. Who? General Eisenhower. Thank you, Fraulein, for your cooperation. Captain, you don't think, I mean, you know why I told you all this. I'm not being a traitor to my people. No, Fraulein. Private Boland explained. We're very grateful. You may wait outside with him. Well, Colonel, what do you think? I don't know. I always thought the only function of the werewolves was a lot of psychological jabbering on the radio. Well, there may be something in what she says. Remember the Scorzini jeep parties during the bulge? It didn't get very far. No, but Scorzini's idea was dangerous nonetheless. Filling captured jeeps with English-speaking Germans in American uniforms, then infiltrating behind the Allied lines with the mission of killing General Eisenhower. It was crazy. Sure, and it might have succeeded. The Krauts knew every one of our passwords. Fortunately, they didn't know who Dick Tracy and Pruneface were. It's your show, Captain. I'll see you get all the tactical help you need. Thank you, sir. We checked every clump of underbrush, every thicket. You ask me, they made up the entire story, Boland and this Fraulein. Why would they want to do that? Boland's in real trouble this time. Probably figures he can hold off the charges against him by some fantastic claims. You may as well dismiss your men, Captain. Thank you. We've been ordered to move up. We're behind schedule now. But as for Boland, I'm ordering him help for a general court-martial. All right, let's go. Must be visitor's day. Boland, I've come to ask you a favor. You tell me what's going to happen to Ilsa. We've no reason to hold her. She's waiting for you now, outside. What do you mean she's waiting for me? Boland, an officer courier and his driver were found stabbed to death. They were carrying a coded message that General Eisenhower will be passing through here this afternoon. Now, there you are. Now, maybe some of you big brains are convinced that Ilsa was on the level about werewolves. Your girlfriend knows this district. She's lived here all her life. I've asked her to take me through that forest. It's real cozy. And don't forget the mustard and pickles. She insists she won't go unless you come along. Now, you see? She's not only beautiful, but she's got brains. I've got to search that forest again, Bolin. And I haven't got time to go through channels. I know I'm sticking my chin out, 
But I'm taking you along without authority. You're springing me? Just for a few hours. Oh, a few hours. Oh, okay, so as long as I get to see Ilsa, I'll be your traveling companion. this area horizontally, vertically, and diagonally. Oh, now let's go around in circles. Captain, there is a cave up there. Carl and I used to play there when we were children, but it is very small, hardly large enough to hide one man. Well, I'm not passing up anything. Let's have a look. Hide two midgets down there. Don't move! Freeze! Come! One scream, Elsa, they're dead men. You, drop your gun. Easy. You mustn't do this. Quiet! My sister betraying the fatherland. Carl, you don't understand. We have been watching you since you got here, just as we watched those bungling soldiers. You were watching us? That's not possible. There's no harm in you knowing. You follow me? Underground. The entire installation underground. Precisely, Captain. One gunshot, I could have 30 men at my side in a matter of seconds. But that signal will not be given for uh, exactly 12 minutes when your General Eisenhower comes through. Take charge of the girl. Carl, I beg you. Quiet, not a sound. Advance guard. In a moment, you're top brass. Then the supreme commander. By that time. No, Gibbard! Fool, oh, that's what she wanted! Oh!
Within a matter of minutes, the Allied High Command arrived at its destination, unaware of the drama taking place in the nearby hills. The decisive battles of history are not always fought between vast armies. Sometimes the future of mankind is changed by a handful of men brought together in a moment of destiny. Everything all right? Yeah, everything's all right. Everything's all right. God put every one of us on this earth for a purpose. Perhaps before this terrible war is over, you'll find yours. 